Okay, so we are here today with Michelle Barnes, Executive Director of the Community Artist Collective in Houston, Texas. And um, Ms. Barnes, thank you so much for joining us in this important conversation. Um, as we get started, can you talk to us a little bit about how you were introduced to the arts? Well, thank you, Dr. Benson and Rutgers University and Texas Southern University for inquiring about the collective, being interested in the collective. That is just so wonderful. Um, it's a boost. My formal exposure uh, to the arts came rather late in life as a, a college freshman. Informally, through my, my parents, I was making things and encouraged to do things at home that were creative. Um, I was interested in making things because I saw my parents making things. My mother sews. She was a home economics teacher. Um, my father, a social worker, is a, was a lifelong learner. He learned to play the guitar. He learned to dibble with um, all kinds of projects, uh, carpentry projects, uh, mosaic projects. Those were a great inspirational models uh, for me to watch, uh, to participate in, and to do on my own as I, I was growing up at home. But by the time I became a freshman in college, as I was looking for my professional career path, and I really had to search hard, um, I discovered art classes. They were available as an elective. And I, uh, back then at the University of Houston, and I was able to explore through design and drawing um, my own interest in pursuing a career in the arts. Um, I was encouraged by my mother to consider teaching when I announced that I was going to be an artist uh, because she wanted to make sure that I could eat. And I am always interested in teaching. I've known that I, I love teaching I'm a natural teacher since I was uh, uh, in second grade in a play and um, as a teacher. And my teacher remarked to my mother, she's going to be a teacher. And I am. I am that. That's awesome. Um, so chart your path to just briefly to a career in the arts. Um, you said that you wanted to be a teacher, but how did that resonate? How did becoming a teacher, um, how, how did that become a part of what your initial inclination was, which was to have a profession or career in the arts? Well, you know, teaching is sharing what you know and love. And I love the arts and I'm continuing to learn and know more about the arts. Um, so that enthusiasm for discovery is what I share with my students, young and old. I've been teaching since the 70s, formally, in the classroom, and now in the community since the, the early uh, 90s, late 80s. Mm -hmm. So once you, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, all these dings and pings, um, I understand that you were teaching art at one point earlier in your career, um, but now you've transitioned into being an arts administrator. Administrator. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, what is the relationship between those early desires to be an artist and what you are doing now? Well, as I mentioned, I'm still an aspiring artist, and as I was looking for uh, mechanisms to um, offer my work publicly. I realized that there were not appropriate venues always. Um, and that even when there were, there was some, let me say, hesitation or reservation about representing African American artists, evidently because they weren't being represented. So uh, my, my first um, kind of exploration outside the classroom into the professional universe of the arts was um, to work at a gallery, to learn about the gallery, because I thought that that would be the natural next connection for 
creative people who've made a commitment to a professional career. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to help bolster that environment that was supportive um, of artists generally, and that would be supportive of me. Um, but I realized that there were some other aspects of uh, producing and uh, well, juggling wow. being an artist and um, contributing to my household and as well as still teaching to keep things in the air. And um, it takes a good deal of time and focus to produce work. So I'm, that's why I'm still aspiring um, to be a professional artist, to carve out enough time, to dedicate enough time to my own production that I could warrant a show in someone's gallery. Mm -hmm. So the collective, the collective is a long-standing 501c3 in Houston. And from what I understand, quite a few artists have come through the doors of the collective. So you've been molding, continuing uh, being an arts educator by working with artists and um, helping them market themselves. And there's so many aspects to the collective though. What can you tell us something about, um, you know, how your, your desire or how you are being an arts professional has translated into other areas of arts education? Well, the collective is truly a, a teaching place. Our, our core value is represented in our um, education program, which was our first formal program as a, a not-for-profit organization. But as we were uh, identifying artists who might be interested in supporting that program, um, it was clear that the artists wanted venue. They wanted support in their professional career rather than to be diverted um, into teaching, um, which was a scary kind of prospect for them. Uh, you know, they, they were wise enough to know that there's only so much time in the day and they would rather spend their time producing than sharing. Um, so I, I respect that. And uh, Sarah and I, co-founder of the collective, made a commitment to an exhibition program and uh, made the outreach of the artist during their exhibitions a secondary factor to their primary focus, which was showing and selling their work. And our programs have continued to grow, first education, then exhibition, then community development, which was to become more outreaching. Uh, it includes public art, publications, community events and festivals, cultural, historic preservation and tourism, and sustainability. So it's a broad program um, that has many tentacles and opportunities for artists to come out of the studio and into the community on basis that they prefer. Um, and then our entrepreneurship program, which sees artists as producers, as business people, and we want artists to be successful in their professional endeavors. So when you, when you uh, now I understand that the collective also goes into a lot of the schools that don't have formal arts curriculum during the day and um, provides after school programming or works with other organizations that don't have an art, arts offering at all. Why, do you, why is it so important for you and for the collective to create those opportunities and to supplement arts instruction in those spaces that are designed you know, to, to create comprehensive educational opportunities for students and don't have it. Why has the collective decided to stop in, uh, to, to step in that gap? In that well, um, we saw a need to encourage the children to find their creative voices in whatever arts genre, but starting with the visual arts because that's what we brought as an opportunity. But we have, uh, through our collaborations with other arts disciplines um, and practitioners, we've introduced opportunities for dance, theater, music, um, literary arts, as well as the visual arts, uh, not only in the school settings and community centers, but as our space resources uh, permit, we have summer programs for children to retool and be um, connected to the arts in ways that are meaningful to them 
and be ready to face the new year, the new school year with its challenges. So a lot of the programs that you provide feature artists who self-identify as African-American. Those are not the only artists who come through the collective doors, the collective doors, but why has your focus been on developing and creating spaces for young, aspiring African-American artists? Why does Black, why do Black artists matter so much? Well, it's an equity issue. It's an opportunity issue. It's an economic issue. It's a justice issue. I mean, there, there are so many aspects um, that could resonate with that, that question and the answer to that. We, we are looking to uh, support artists in, through encouragement, through opportunities, through assurances, through um, remuneration, uh, so that they will be encouraged to pursue their own path. We're listening for ways to be helpful. We're listening for ways to bridge opportunities with them, to them, uh, and for them, uh, because they represent our cultural community. We want them to be successful. We want them to be encouraged. We, we want them to be fearless, um, but in spite of whatever personal trepidation there may be, this is new to me, you know, that we still want them to try, be willing to try. That's a growth experience. That's a learning experience. We're, we're operating from the advantage of, or vantage point of educators, essentially still. Yeah, yeah, really interesting. Um, so you mentioned that art is a justice issue, a social justice issue. And um, that is, in a lot of respects, that idea is the impetus for this larger conversation about black art. And I'm just wondering, you know, if we can talk briefly about how you perceive that to be so. Um, we, we talked briefly about what's going on, the, the social unrest um, with respect to George Floyd's death. And then there have been subsequent murders, um, various instances around the country. And still the mantra prevail, prevails that Black Lives Matter. And I'm wondering how art and how the arts in general, visual performing, enables children to see how their lives matter. And by extension, Black people in particular, how they're able to understand how and why their lives matter. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting that the, um, the Black Lives matter mantra has emerged that is expressive black lives matter has to be stated has to be visible uh, because we've been invisible in our own country in our own communities for so long too long um, so black lives matter the words um, applied to streets, to, uh, applied to cardboard pieces, applied to murals with other visuals, helps even the children, maybe especially the children, to be clear that they matter. Okay. Um, and because it's uh, an interracial, uh, intercultural, intercontinental um, practice at this point, um, it's inclusive of people who are not Black, who also value life and are willing to be supportive of people who do not look like them, who have not had their personal experiences, who have had other sets of experiences, to be supportive of, of us as Black people. So it's, it's a wonderful um, and horrific um, moment that we share right now. Um, the arts are expressive. They, they are autobiographical. They, are, uh, they prioritize what individual artists and movements reflect and are about. So um, we want to, to assure artists that if they are honest, if they're operating with integrity, their voices, their images are valuable. 
and will be recognized. So as the older artists, teenagers and older are in the vanguard at this point, the next wave of young people will realize the value, not only of the black lives, but of the artwork that expresses black life. Mm. Awesome, yeah. Could not have said that any better. Um, well, I'm really looking forward to the panel discussion that, that the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Institute will be hosting in October. I look forward to your joining the, a, a group of artists to continue this discussion. It's very important and timely. And I also look forward to hearing a lot more about the collective. The images that you sent will be posted. And is there any other piece of information that you'd like to share about perhaps an upcoming event or exhibit something that um, our viewers might want to look at on your website? Mm -hmm. Well, um, please do visit the, the website thecollective.org. There are some film clips of, um, or video clips of artists who are in the current exhibition, uh, The Perseverant Generation. It was opened um, in conjunction with A Soul of a Nation, which was hosted at the Museum of Fine Arts here in Houston until last weekend. Uh, our exhibition continues with local artists um, until the 26th of September. We are hosting an event, uh, a mini telethon, November 7th, that we invite you to participate in. Uh, there's also a save the date on our website regarding that. Um, but the emphasis on that is, has to do with mental health and the state of wellness that we need to be concerned about um, as creative people in our cultural community and beyond. And, and we think that um, our cultural community is going to be connected by this information um, that encourages people to be self-caring. That's, That's from um, 7.30, 7 until 8.30 on November 7th. So please look for that and do visit our website and be engaged in the arts. Thank you, Michelle Barnes. We look forward to hearing from you in October and we'll definitely make sure that the collective is, um, is present on the Rutgers University website. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Benson.